very much, uh, Anne, for the very uh, warm uh, introduction. So uh, as Anne uh, kindly introduced, uh, I'm very glad to uh, come back. And uh, as Anne uh, said, I graduated from uh, Berkeley uh, six, six, seven years ago in 2012. So I, knew, I, I know your face. Uh, I know many of you. And uh, I was working with uh, Professor Mike Hansen uh, doing lots of uh, air transportation related work. Uh, but uh, today the presentation is, uh, has a little to do with air transportation uh, because after I graduated, uh, as, uh, as everyone getting into academia, people expect you to do something different. So I'm thinking what I should do. Um, for those of you who stay here long enough, uh, you may know the uh, first floor and the fourth floor story in McLaughlin. So the story is that people or uh, professors or uh, graduate students doing air transportation research. They are doing research on the ground floor, whereas uh, professors and graduate students are doing uh, highway research or ground transportation research sitting on the top floor of the McLaughlin <laughs> building. Um, so I'm thinking, uh, while thinking about my future research, I recalled uh, this uh, one first floor, fourth floor story. So I thought, well, it's a one and four. How about the second floor, a third floor? So uh, I'm thinking maybe uh, still uh, stay a little closer to the first floor. That's the first step, and say what I can get. So I'm thinking uh, still have some of my air transportation routes, but expanded that to some other other emerging areas. Um, so one of the emerging areas is about all these innovations in urban mobility. Uh, one of them is on the freight side, how to do the deliveries, uh, the last mile, basically how to deliver items she can request, including your food, groceries, or uh, retail, uh, retail items to customers. Uh, this is important because we have an explosive growth in e-commerce which drives this uh, shipping demand. Um, here, so today I'm going to talk about, share with you some of my, my, my uh, discoveries, my work. Uh, while I try to explore what's in there and on the second floor. Uh, so on, this, on the abstract, on the, uh, the flyer, I saw I uh, int initially intended to present three system designs, and then I realized that maybe I don't have enough time to look at uh, all three in 15 minutes, so I reduced that uh, to uh, just two designs. Uh, before I uh, start, I would like to uh, make some acknowledgments. So this research has been funded uh, by uh, National Science Foundation and the World Bank Group. I have uh, a few collaborators. The uh, uh, first one is my former PhD student, uh, Nabin Kafli, who uh, graduated uh, a couple years ago. Uh, now is uh, uh, engineer analytics and optimization in JetBlue Airways in New York. I have my current PhD student, uh, Tanvir Ahmed, uh, who is doing some of the more uh, recent work uh, on crowd shipping, and uh, my colleague, uh, Professor Jen Ling, uh, from uh, my department. So uh, what is crowd shipping? Now, certainly it's your first question. Uh, it's, it's not a, a word that has been in existence for a long time. So simply speaking, it is about using crowds to do shipping. Uh, it can be, it can have a, broader uh, definition, but here in the work I present today, uh, it concerns uh, interurban shipments that uh, uh, can be picked up and delivered promptly using a crowd of ordinary people like you and me. So as long as we have some free time, uh, we can uh, do the deliveries. And these people often uh, use some uh, lighter transportation modes, such as walking, biking, uh, or driving to do the deliveries. Then the second question is uh, why crowd shipping is better? Uh, why we want to introduce crowd shipping for last mile? Uh, there are uh, decent reasons. Uh, first is there is a push for, uh, from the e-commerce growth. Uh, this graph shows uh, how the retail e-commerce um, uh, sales worldwide has increased from uh, a little over one trillion dollars in 2014 uh, to close to three trillion dollars last year, and it's projected to uh, uh, reach about five trillion dollars by 2021. As a result of that, uh, there's lots of uh, there has been uh, there has been a precipitous increase in urban tra traffic uh, 
the United Nations has an estimate that in a developed city, every person will generate on average 0.3 daily truck trips. The shipping demand increase also imposes lots of financial stress, uh, stress on these uh, delivery service providers. Uh, for Amazon, back in 2007, it spent, it spent about uh, $1 billion uh, in that year for dealing with uh, logistics. Uh, but last year, for just for shipping, Amazon spent about $27 billion and another $27 billion on warehousing and fulfillment. So there's lots of uh, sharp increase in logistics cost. And if there are any innovations, uh, better ways to reduce the cost of delivery, that will be good for the delivery system. The increase in the truck traffic also uh, contributes to uh, many negative externalities in the urban environment, such as uh, the traffic congestion, the pollution, uh, the wear and tear of a road infrastructure, and the shortage of uh, truck parking space. In Manhattan, uh, every truck on average can accumulate $750 per month just for parking fines. You can see uh, the severity of the parking space shortage. On the other hand, we have the pool from developing uh, sustainable or livable urban communities. Uh, people have been uh, proposing different measures to limit truck traffic, such as restricting the truck delivery time route and uh, size and weight, introducing low emission zones, uh, setting up urban consolidation centers so trucks do not need to go into the, uh, the end customers and deploying truck parking reservation systems. But as you can see, all these measures still are centered around trucks. And people are thinking, can we go around trucks to think about alternative means, alternative modes to do the last mile delivery? And this uh, gives rise to crowd shipping as one of the innovations to reconcile the push and pull. Crowd shipping is enabled by two important factors. The first factor is uh, economics. Um, crowd sources, uh, crowd, crowd sources uh, as ad hoc couriers present significant cost advantage over the traditional delivery methods, which rely on full-time employees and uh, self-owned vehicle assets. So as I said, if you have a, a two hour or half a day free time, you may want to uh, do delivery, uh, earning some extra money, if uh, someone, if uh, Amazon offers you $20, then you may think that's a good deal. But if you want to have a full-time employee, and you may pay uh, $40, $50 per hour, plus the truck-related cost, insurance, maintenance, depreciation, all this added up together will certainly uh, greatly surpass the cost of uh, having these crowdsourcing to do the delivery. The second enabler is uh, technology. Uh, we have uh, this uh, ubiquitous mobile computing and communication which will allow the cross shipping uh, to be operational viable, the constant or even real-time communication between the cross sources and this uh, delivery service provider will make, uh, will make uh, cross shipping a realistic option. As a result of this, uh, uh, of these two enablers, there have been rapid developments of uh, crowd shipping practice uh, worldwide. So uh, this uh, is uh, one of uh, a snapshot. Sorry, it's in French. Uh, we have a uh, we have a, a audience uh, who is from France, so you may know these uh, words. But uh, basically, you can guess uh, it's about the different uh, crowd shipping companies uh, uh, around the world. On the top right, top left, it's uh, all these shipping companies uh, in North America. And on the top right, uh, it's uh, companies in Asia and in different European countries are also lots of uh, crowd shipping practices. And this uh, graph actually is a little bit old now. Um, the next one, uh, in the US, we have uh, the major players in the crowd shipping delivery sector. Uh, I guess you have used some of them, Uber Eats, GrabHub, or uh, DoorDash. How many of you used uh, one of the three? Uh, a lot. So you may wonder next time who do the deliveries, not like uh, you or me, like ordinary people. So you can see this, these companies have attracted lots of uh, uh, venture capital funding, or one of them is already IPO, uh, and this uh, huge amount of uh, investment into this business shows the significance of, of this sector. 
the next uh, graph shows a broader uh, panorama of uh, crowd shipping in the logistics sector. So it includes the uh, local delivery, the deliveries in the urban area uh, on the lower left, and the intercity deliveries on the, on the right, even international deliveries on the top right, and uh, some uh, warehousing related uh, practice within crowd shipping, crowd sourcing, uh, such as delivery with some relay points and warehousing with uh, crowdsourced workers. But you can see most of the businesses are concentrated in the lower left, that is for a local last mile delivery, that is the focus of uh, our work as well. So this is about industry practice. For academic research, uh, it's also uh, pretty new. Um, it, the literature has been growing, but remain limited. Uh, research mostly emerged in the past three years. People have looked at the matching of opportunistic crowdsources with uh, shipping demand. Here, opportunistic means a crowdsourcing has its own planned uh, activity, has its own original uh, traveling <coughs> schedule. So if there is a, a request <coughs> pickup that is not too far away from one's original travel plan, then make, by making a small deviation, uh, this uh, uh, shipping request could be fulfilled uh, while this uh, crowdsourcing can earn some extra money. There's also research using uh, in-store shoppers or the employees of the supermarkets for delivery of uh, online shopping. Uh, this is uh, actually being tested by Walmart a couple years ago. Uh, there are e empirical estimations of uh, crowdsourcing willingness to do crowd shipping and the customer's acceptability of crowd shipping business. Despite these efforts, there are some gaps in the literature. Uh, first, there, is, there are very few investigations of using dedicated crowdsources. I don't need to uh, go anywhere, but I just have this two hour free time. I want to do some, some uh, delivery to uh, in exchange for some revenue. Some missing elements in crowd shipping system design. Um, crowd shipping is good, but it's not good for any context. How can we leverage the strength of crowd shipping with the strength of the traditional means of delivery uh, to make the system as a whole better. Uh, we need to know the uh, information, the time availability, and the willingness to do crowd shipping or these crowd sources. Once a delivery service provider has collected information, how can the information be best used? Many of the matching between the crowd sources and the shipping demand nowadays is highly on demand. If you use Amazon Prime now, the delivery is within one hour or two hours, then it requires a computation efficient and effective uh, online matching algorithms. Uh, as the demand, or as the origin of demand and destination of demand are uh, intrinsically distributed, there could be spatial imbalance between the origins and destinations. As a result of that, over time, there could be imbalance between where cross-sources are demanded and where cross-sources are present. So uh, we may think of proactive rebalancing between the shipping demand and processing supply. So those are s some of the uh, elements that may need a further investigation in the cross shipping literature. But as, uh, to as for today, I'm going to focus on the first two elements uh, with uh, uh, two designs. The first is a hybrid system with a truck uh, and the cross combined relay system. Uh, the second is uh, designing uh, some mechanism to uh, impose uh, individualized pricing, so to increase the delivery efficiency. For the first one, uh, the context is that uh, the depot or the warehouses are located far away from the city centers where customers are mostly located. Um, so trucks need to uh, depart from those uh, depots and get into the city centers and do the delivery. But the core of the design is to substitute part of the uh, traditional truck delivery, specifically the last leg of the truck uh, uh, delivery by crowd sources. So the trucks will meet the selected crowd sources at locations where the parcel relay occurs. Uh, the graph shows, uh, this, uh, shows this idea. We have uh, these uh, brown uh, points on the top left is the departing depot, and there are two trucking routes getting to the urban area. 
and there are some uh, uh, relay points denoted by the red triangles where partial relay occurs. These parcels are uh, passed on to the selected crowd sources who will form routes during the last mile delivery. Alternatively, this could be the first mile pickup, uh, but in the end, uh, these uh, two trucks will uh, visit much fewer customers and, uh, and uh, return to the depot. The motivation for having such a design is uh, uh, to leverage the strength of uh, both the truck, truck mode and the crowd sourcing mode. Uh, for trucks, it, they are efficient for line haul movement between far away depot and downtown by taking advantage of the economies of scale. But they are not so, uh, so smart or so adequate for last mile around neighbor, urban neighborhoods, especially with narrow streets or alleys or restrictions on truck access. For crowd sources, they are highly maneuverable. If you ride a bike or if you walk, uh, you can access uh, some narrow, uh, narrow urban neighborhoods, and uh, they also have cost less to the to the delivery service provider. But they can travel in limited distance, and they have uh, um, you can't have them go all the way 25 miles to a suburb warehouse, pick up items, and come back, uh, traveling another 25 miles, and they won't. Uh, that won't be realistic. So the proposed hybrid system takes, up, takes advantage of the strength of both modes. How the hybrid system works, um, uh, here are the steps. First, uh, the delivery service provider will post uh, this uh, pickup delivery request online. Um, on receiving, on seeing this uh, request, then each interested cross OC will see uh, what I can do through a, sum, uh, through a bidding process. So cross OC will submit a bid. Uh, each bid will be a subset of the pickup delivery jobs uh, with a relay point because they're, whatever they do, they have to communicate with the truck through a relay point. Upon receiving all the bids, uh, this delivery service <coughs> provider will select bids and based on the selected bids, schedule trucks for visiting the associate relay points in the case that some of the customers are not associated with any selected relay points, then these uh, truck routes must also, must also visit those, uh, those customers directly. Then once the plan is uh, formed, the plan will be disseminated back to, uh, to the crowd sources, and through coordinated uh, operation, the plan will be executed. So in this uh, 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 functioning, uh, the steps, the most uh, technical, technically critical steps are the second and the third, and that's the focus of, uh, of uh, what we're going to cover next. For bid generation submission, uh, in, we have to consider uh, some constraints while constructing the feasible jobs. Uh, first is uh, a cross OC can only travel <coughs> a maximum distance also has a limited carrying capacity, and it has to consider which relay point will be the best for a given bid. In determining the price of a bid, a cross OC needs to consider that the bid price needs to be competitive. In other words, in order to serve a given number of customers, the routing should be the cost minimum route. In addition, uh, a cross OC needs to submit a, num a limited number of bids um, that is uh, 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 we are what we assume in the system. And each bid should have a price in order to maximize the revenue by performing the crowd shipping. Uh, these uh, crowd sources will submit bids with the highest price in order to have, uh, as have, in order to maximize the revenue. The next step for bid selection and the truck routing and scheduling, this is a much more complicated step. Um, it's from the delivery service provider's perspective. The objective is to minimize the overall shipping cost. Uh, we uh, formulate this problem in a vehicle routing context. The total cost consists of three parts. Uh, the truck routing cost, uh, the payment to crowd sources to do the last leg delivery, and the penalty for any uh, service outside uh, the delivery the, uh, the desired the delivery time window. So we assume that the delivery is with time windows. 
A crossroad C is assumed to be assigned the most one job, could be sele selected once, but not twice. Each customer must be served either by a crossroad C or by truck directly. This uh, cost minimization is subject to uh, a series of constraints. So uh, I'm just going to show you what each set of constraints means. So first we need to consider the truck route, uh, a node in the network will be visited by a truck at most once. Uh, the delivery service provider has a limited uh, fleet size, so at most, uh, uh, the maximum number of trucks will be utilized for the delivery. And for each visited node, we have to respect uh, the flow balance. Um, then for truck schedule constraints, uh, we have to uh, look at the time visiting each node by a truck. And here, uh, we allow a truck to wait at a location because each delivery has a, has a delivery time window. And we also need to track the time for customers served by crowdsourcing. If you have any questions, feel free to stop me and, and ask. Uh, a truck has a limited capacity as crowdsourcing. So we need to track as along the journey the loads on a truck, and these loads should not exceed the capacity of the truck. Uh, for the bid selection, uh, all customers must be served. Uh, if a relay point is used or is selected, it must be visited by some truck. A crossroad C is allowed to have one job at maximum, or could be unselected. And uh, in the last, uh, we have uh, the decision variables, which are either binary or positive numbers. So this problem um, is formulated with the object function constraint as a mixed integer nonlinear program. Uh, the nonlinearity is embodied both in the uh, object function and in the constraints. So recall the object function, the third term is a penalty for service outside the customer's delivery window. So if the service is earlier than the beginning of the delivery window, there will be some earliness uh, penalty the service is later, is later than the end of the delivery window, then there will be a lateness penalty, yes. Um, so it is not for analytical purpose. So this, this problem presented here is a static problem. Okay. So we want to, theoretically, we can have more, but, um, um, yeah, here we just consider at most one for each cross OC. It's a job, so a job can consist of multiple pickup delivery requests. Okay. Um, so here the penalty is um, uh, a piecewise linear function. So you can see when it's earlier, there's a penalty as the earliest, earliness um, uh, increases, the penalty increases. Similarly, as the lateness increases, the penalty increases. Uh, we introduced uh, two new variables which measure the earliness and the lateness into the object function so that we can express the penalty as a pure linear function. The nonlinearity also uh, it happens to the truck schedule and load capacity constraints because there are interaction terms between the delivery time and the indicator variable for trucks uh, visiting, uh, visiting a node. And this uh, linearization follows uh, a common technique in, uh, uh, in integer program. Uh, we use a big M method. After the linearization, uh, we still find that this problem is not easy. Uh, it's an NP-complete problem, which uh, suggests that if we just use commercial solvers, it's very hard to solve it in a reasonable, uh, in, in a, in a me medium size or large size problem instance. So we have to design some uh, alternative solution approaches to uh, have generate some um, uh, reasonable solution in reasonable amount of time. What we propose to do is we have this uh, decomposition and the table search based uh, heuristic. Um, we decompose this uh, bit selection and track routing scheduling problem into a bit selection sub problem and the track routing and scheduling sub problem. And then iteratively solve these two sub problems 
using a table search. And a table search is uh, with respect to the related points uh, in the system. For the bit selection, for the bit selection, uh, we solve it as a winner determination problem. So uh, this is also a classic problem in uh, bit in theory. So the objective is to minimize payment to uh, cross-sources, and then a customer may be served uh, exactly once. Uh, cross-source wins at most of one bit, and then the binary decision variables. This problem can be efficiently solved using branch and bounds. For uh, the similarly, uh, for the track routing and scheduling problem, we use a simulated unlimiting. Uh, this is a meta heuristic which mimics the cooling of material uh, in a, a heat bath. Basically, we start from a high temperature, gradually reduce the temperature. At each temperature, we want to improve the solution, but we also allow the possibility to have a to have a, a worse solution in order to. Uh, uh, get rid of, get get out of some local optimum trap. Uh, at each iteration, each temperature, we perform these intra and inter route moves. Basically, we consider uh, modifying the routes by uh, changing by swapping the order of any two nodes in a route, or we move uh, a route uh, from move a node from one route to another route, or we exchange the locations of two routes that are from two nodes that are from different routes. And here on the left, it shows the performance of the simulated linear approach uh, because we allow these uh, worst solutions to be considered. So there is some, some uh, fluctuations in the beginning, but over time, we will reach some stable solution. And that solution is much better than, from, than the solution using a simple descent approach. In other words, we just look for improved solutions. With uh, both uh, solution methods for the bit selection and the track routing scheduling, uh, we can uh, iteratively, solve, iteratively solve the overall problem using a table search. Uh, we set up an empty table list in the beginning of the relay points. Then we solve the bit selection problem, uh, which gives us the cross sources selected and the relay points. And then we solve the track routing and the scheduling problem um, um, with the selected relay points and the customers uncovered by these selected uh, cross-sources. Among the relay points that are not taboot, know that in the beginning, no relay points is taboot, then we select one with a minimum associate cost and temporarily drop it. Then we resolve, resolve the bit selection and the track routing scheduling. If the cost is increased, that means the relay point is important, and we label it as taboo, and we return it as a selected relay point. If the total cost is decreased, then we permanently reduce, uh, remove this relay point. We update the cost and the set of selected relay points. Then we check if we have checked all the relay points that are not, or not uh, uh, tabooed. If there are still untabooed relay points, then we go back to the same thing, resolving the bit selection and track routing and scheduling. If all the relay points are tabooed, then uh, we store this uh, table list in a separate place and empty the table list doing another round of iteration. When we stop, uh, we stop when the table list of relay points uh, becomes identical between two iterations. So what is the uh, performance of this uh, heuristic? And here we compare that with uh, the opti optimal solution using the commercial solver. As I said, we can only test this um, uh, for small problem instances because uh, as the problem size goes large, the commercial solver cannot solve it in, uh, in a reasonable amount of time. But overall, the picture, uh, the table here shows the computation time using the heuristic is much smaller, whereas the optimality gap is kept at a reasonable level. We use the model and the solution approach to test a bunch of uh, cases uh, so the, uh, here we show that we can have, uh, we randomly generate the customers in blue dots and the uh, cross sources uh, whose origins are in the green circles and the uh, relay points. The solid red triangles are the selected relay points. Some relay points are not selected as shown um, uh, in uh, uh, the hollow red triangles. And these uh, blue lines show the actual cross source routes. 
As you can see, not all the blue dots are connected by the lines, meaning that not all the, cross, not all the customers are served by cross-OCs. Some of them will be served by trucks. In terms of the cost, uh, we focus on comparing the cost with the cost of truck-only delivery uh, because the demands are randomly generated. So we do a bunch of simulations and, uh, uh, and the, plot, uh, the box plot. So overall, on average, there's 10% reduction in shipping cost, 25% reduction in the truck VMT, and there's a slight increase in the time period violations, which is not surprising because you have the relay process that will make uh, the delivery a little bit longer, and that could uh, make the delivery more vulnerable to violating time windows. We uh, want to make this a little bit more rigorous, so we uh, perform hypothesis test. Basically, we found the difference in uh, truck VMT and the total shipping cost is uh, statistically significant, whereas the difference in the time period violation is not. So that supports the advantage of using the cloud shipping uh, versus uh, the hybrid system versus the truck only delivery system. So to summarize the first design, we have uh, 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 consider the delivery from a suburb warehouses to urban customers, which leverage the strength of both uh, trucks and the crowd sources. The key design components are crowd source, uh, bit selection, and truck routing and schedule. The problem is originally formulated as a mixed integer nonlinear programming. Uh, we tried, we uh, linearize it and use a decomposition and table search based heuristic that can yield high quality solutions in a reasonable amount of time. And the results show that it has a significant potential to reduce the shipping costs and the truck VMT, uh, which will enhance the efficiency of the delivery as well as the uh, environmental sustainability for, uh, uh, for deliveries. So that's the first one. Uh, let's move on to another one, which look at deliveries from the pricing perspective. Uh, the design context is for short pickup drop-off distance so we no longer consider trucks, and it's also for fast or even on-demand delivery. Cross sources need to submit private information to the delivery service provider, uh, such as available time window, your mode of doing the deliveries, uh, and the willingness to do the cross shipping. And the willingness is a key component because this is subject to some strategic misreporting from these cross sources. Uh, based on the information, then the delivery service provider will uh, assign uh, shipments to cross sources and uh, pay the cross sources accordingly. <coughs> Why is the willingness to do cross shipping important? Uh, as I said, pays individualized price to uh, cross sources. And this is compared to the state of the practice, which just uh, pay every cross source a fixed uh, price, a fixed rate. But this has a disadvantage. It can overpay those cross sources whose willingness to do cross shipping is lower, or it can exclude uh, cross sources who have higher willingness to do cross shipping, uh, but would be needed when the shipping demand is high. So basically we have a more flexible and demand sensitive uh, pricing scheme than the state of the practice. But there's a caveat here. Um, the cross sources, uh, selfish agents, they want to know what they can do to best to maximize their own interest. Here is an illustration example. If we have two uh, cross sources, A and B, with uh, one ship, uh, shipment, and these two cross sources have uh, their true willingness to do cross shipping as uh, $5 and $10. Um, so normally A will be chosen, but A, if he has some probabilistic knowledge of what B has in terms of willingness to do cross shipping, he may say, uh, he may think, well, I can inflate my value, my value of willingness a little bit, say to $9, so that I can still be selected. But for the delivery uh, service as a whole, it will be $4 more for the shipping cost. It is important to prevent this from happening. Uh, what we do is we design a mechanism to incentivize crowd sources to truthfully report the willingness to do crowd shipping. How does this uh, system with uh, individualized pricing works? So we have uh, four steps. First, we ask the cross sources to submit the private information. 
Then we generate feasible shipping jobs for each participating crowd source. And then we assign jobs to crowd sources. But the last step is the most important. We design the payment scheme. So the payment scheme should be one such that the crowd sources realizes it's my best interest to choose for the report. For information solicitation, a crowd source submits private information in terms of the start and end of one's available time window. Uh, the state's willingness to do crowd shipping measured in dollars per hour and the same mode of, uh, uh, of uh, doing delivery. So for the time window and the mode of delivery, uh, the, we can easily show that they are less, uh, the cross sources are less likely to misreport such information. What is more vulnerable is this uh, uh, state's willingness to do crowd shipping. But before that, we, uh, let's look at how we can generate feasible shipping jobs um, for each crowd source C, because eventually we assign crowd sources to shipping jobs. These jobs can, each job can contain just one sh uh, shipping request or multiple shipping requests. There are many combinations, so this is a combinatorial problem. What we did is we start from simple. We look at the single shipment jobs first. The generation should respect the three constraints. So first, the start of the cross source is available time plus the shipping time, which means the earliest time to deliver the shipments should be, uh, uh, should be earlier than the end of the shipment's delivery time. Otherwise, not, it's not going to be feasible. Second, the end of cross source is available time should be uh, later than the start of the shipment's delivery time window. Otherwise, this cross source will not be compatible with the shipment. Third, the cross source's available time length should be greater than the, the shipping time. Once we have these uh, single shipment uh, feasible jobs, then we are uh, using a simple branching, uh, branching scheme to uh, uh, look at the multi-shipment feasible jobs. The idea is also simple. We look at these uh, single shipment jobs, one, two, and three uh, here. So then we look at uh, what is the combination of one and two as a potential job. If it's not feasible, then we disregard it. And we disregard any further larger jobs that contain one and two. Uh, we just need to, in this example, look at the combination of one, three, and two and three. And the check of feasibility is uh, through a problem, is a traveling salesman problem with time windows, and also with the cross source availability. Um, because each cross source has a limited carrying capacity, this problem can be solved to optimality uh, quite efficiently. Once we have these jobs, uh, then the problem of assigning jobs to cross sources uh, is formulated as a set partitioning problem. Uh, the objective is to minimize total shipping cost, which consists of the cost uh, using cross sources and the cost of using uh, beta vehicles. Because it's possible some of the uh, uh, shipping requests will not be assigned to any cross sources. Uh, there are two uh, constraints. One is the cross source gets at most one job, and each shipment assigned uh, either to a cross source or backup vehicle. The fourth step is the most critical, so it's to design a payment scheme. Uh, to prevent misreporting, we propose the following payment. The first term is the cost of a cross source I to perform shipping job J based on the express willingness to do cross shipping. So this is a, a natural, uh, natural term. Say you express a $5 per hour as your willingness to do cross shipping, and your assigned job takes two hours, then you'll be paid $10, uh, which will be this term. What is more interesting is the second one, but uh, let's first look at the what V denotes in the second term. So V of A star theta, theta is the information, uh, denotes the total shipping cost for the delivery service provider based on the reporting information from cross sources. And we also have this V A star, A star is assignment outcome uh, with uh, this uh, subscript uh, minus I, which means the total shipping cost for the delivery service provider based on the reporting information from the cross sources. But the assignment is without cross source I. We expect that if a cross source C is lost, 
then the total shipping cost will be non-decreasing. So the difference here will capture cross-OCI's contribution to reducing the total shipping cost, which is a positive externality of this cross-OCI to the total delivery. We can show that with this additional term, which is to incentivize the cross-OCI to truthfully report its uh, private information. Uh, the payment alliance cross-OCI info reporting was producing an outcome that minimizes the DSP, the delivery service provider's shipping cost with true cost parameters. As a result of this, uh, it is best for cross-OCI to truthfully report the, his or her willingness, willingness to do crossing. Uh, you may have some questions. First, there is this additional payment, uh, but how large is this additional payment? We want to know that. So we add all the payments uh, across individual, across individual cross sources to the equation uh, we saw before. On the left hand side will be the total true cost to the delivery service provider. On the right will be the total shipping cost. And this additional term will be the additional, total additional payments. And we can show uh, in theory that as the number of cross sources increases, this term will approach zero uh, as shown also in our numerical analysis. A second question, uh, if we have additional payments because of the cross source, how is that uh, compared to if we don't have such a mechanism, just let cross sources report whatever they want? And it's likely to have some over-reporting of the value, but would that result in increasing total shipping cost be less or greater than with the mechanism? This is a theoretical challenging question. Uh, for uh, analytical, solu analytical solutions, uh, we can only come up with a special case with IID distribution of crowd sources, willingness to do crowd shipping, and the single shipments. Under this uh, simplification, the extent of over-reporting of one's willingness to do crowd shipping, delta R, is equal to uh, the term on the right, uh, which is a function of the number of crowd sources, basically, if you have more cross sources, each cross sources power in the system will be less. So the, uh, the tendency to over report will also become less. The second term is very similar to the inverse of hazard rate. So for distributions with a monotone increasing hazard rate, such as normal distribution, exponential uniform, for the uh, distribution of willingness to do cross shipping, the optimal reporting would increase as the number of cross sources decreases. We also compare this uh, uh, cost increase absent the mechanism due to uh, misreporting with the additional payments if we have the mechanism in place. And we found in most cases this uh, overreporting reporting uh, uh, absent mechanism will be much larger than the additional payments with the mechanism. Uh, we also did some numerical analysis. Uh, the first graph shows the comparison of our of this uh, pricing scheme with uh, truck only delivery without crowd sources. So the red curve show the uh, crowd, sh crowd shipping cost and the uh, black line shows the truck, truck only delivery cost. So a significant cost reduction using the pricing scheme and the crowd shipping system. We also compared the crowd shipping under the pricing scheme and the cost and with the fixed pay rate. So this curve show the fixed, uh, fixed pay rate total shipping cost. If we have a low pay rate, the x-axis is the pay rate, then we won't be able to solicit enough cross sources. The total shipping cost will be high. If we have a high pay rate, that certainly will drive the shipping cost, total shipping cost. But on average, uh, our pricing scheme will reduce the shipping cost uh, by 17% compared to a fixed pay rate scheme. Uh, another graph showing the trade-off between allowing a cross source to carry multiple shipments in terms of uh, total shipping cost and solution time, and uh, the consolidation of, ca of uh, shipping requests will reduce cost, but uh, requires more computation. We also looked at a uh, dynamic case uh, for this uh, pricing scheme uh, using the uh, north side, near north side of Chicago downtown, as you, for those of you who are familiar with Chicago, so here is, uh, here is a neighbor, uh, uh, Navy Pier, which is the entertainment area, and here is the Michigan Avenue 
the central shopping district, and there are lots of residence units in this area. So we use a shipping demand density from a geographic research uh, incorporation uh, for a Walmart. There's a Walmart neighborhood store, as uh, noted by the red triangle. So we generate the demand based on the density information uh, and apply the uh, dynamic version of this uh, pricing scheme. So what I want to highlight here, this is the last uh, uh, graph, is that we have to consider the dispatching interval. If we have an increase, if we increase the dispatch interval in the beginning, then we could allow more consolidation opportunities, which will reduce the shipping cost. But as we keep increasing the dispatch interval, less frequent dispatching means lots of the cross sources available time will be wasted while they wait. And that will reduce the effective supply of cross sources, and that will be to increase the shipping cost. So in summary, uh, the second design uh, focuses on individualized pricing uh, based on each, uh, each cross-sources uh, expressed willingness to do uh, deliveries. The mechanism design approach uh, introduces additional payments, which is equal to the cross-sources positive externality to reduce the total cost. It prevents strategic misreporting of willingness to do cross-shipping, and the added payments diminishes as the number of cross-sources increases, the additional payments likely uh, is going to be less than the added payments from cross-sourcing misreporting if such a mechanism is not in place. And there will be significant cost reduction compared to truck-only delivery and the cross-shipping with a fixed pay rate. So overall, uh, we, uh, in this uh, talk, we explore two designs that involve uh, using lower cost and ad hoc couriers for last mile urban delivery. Uh, the first design, uh, high, which is a hybrid design, leverages the strength of both crowd sources and uh, traditional trucks. The second design is based on, on the individually expressed willingness to do delivery uh, to come up with individualized price. The results show clear cost and environmental benefits of using crowd shipping to solve the last mile problem. Uh, there are certainly just two of the many directions uh, to make crowd shipping more attractive. And here we can have some uh, directions for other research. Uh, first is to have some uh, more efficient algorithms for fast, adaptive, and on-demand matching. Uh, second is uh, how we can combine assignments or the matching with the repositioning of crowd, ship, crowd, crowd sources so that we can better balance the supply and demand in real time. So with that, uh, I uh, thank you for your attention and open up the questions.